and of course the area you're looking at now, that used to be used for on this side, oh, on, head. on that side used to be equipment, dinghy, flares, ammunition for the machine guns which used to be around the blisters here, there used to be a machine gun here and another one on the other side, so the ammunition for those be stored here, and on this side you used to have a pair of bunks, bearing in mind these aeroplanes had a tremendous range and endurance, so when they were out on convoy escorts or air sea rescue duties, they could be out for many many hours, 14 hours easy, 14 hours upwards. I've actually seen a, a, a veteran's logbook with 22 hours of a single patrol. So oh. a long time. Oh. So you could carry spare crew. Now, quite important here, you can see the contour of the aircraft there. On the pure flying boat version, not the amphibian, that contour would carry on down. So you have a lot more space in the middle here. But because this is an amphibian, the main wheel structure comes inside an awful lot. This is the lot. main wheel bay. This, the main wheels are here. That's the part of where the main wheel uh, mechanism goes. But otherwise this would have been the same size as the, the room you're in there. When this was a water bomber you would have just down there there would have been a scoop where they could scoop up the water off the lake and come into a tank where I'm stood now. This area would be a tank. Again on a wartime aeroplane, right up here, you would have had the flight engineer's position. That's why you've got two little windows. Quite a few people said, why are the windows up there when you can't reach them? Mm -hmm. That's simply because that used to be the flight engineer's seat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The flight engineer used to have a duplicate set of engine and propeller controls here. And he would sit here. He would sit there and there's his controls there. Now of course this aeroplane is very modern, it's fly-by-wire. Steel <laughs> wires. <laughs> And it's all manual, there's no power flying control. All muscle induced. All muscle induced, yes. <laughs> Interesting little feature here is this big red handle. Now, the floats retract into the wingtips. So as you look on the outside of the aeroplane now, the floats are retracted and form the wingtips. Normally they're electrically operated, but if the electrical operation fails, you use that handle in those two lugs there, that one is a high gear, that one's a low gear, and you can hand wind them down or up, depending on what you need. Uh, it's hard work as well if you don't put it on the low gear when you need to, but that works. <coughs> now, normal float operation is with this electric motor here driving the gearbox here. You can see the shaft going vertically upwards there and up into the pylon on the wing front spar and another gearbox and the shafts go out to the wingtips and then the, the wing floats themselves are operated by screw jacks. Come down or go up. So when you're hand winding this you're hand winding all that shafting system. But the <laughs> transmission works. Yeah, it works. It's simple and it works a treat. All this here is original structure. It's in really good condition. All that is all original from when it was built. And it's easily certified now for safe operation. Remarkably, yes. Um, we've just renewed the certificate of airworthiness uh, in April uh, for another three years. So that's, that's a testament of its safety and certainly is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. It's simple. It's it's not it's not pressurized so you haven't got any fatigue cycles on the fuselage or anything silly like that. On a wartime aeroplane you would not have that big picture window there. That would be a very small one about that size there. And similarly on this side of the aeroplane, on the, on the port side, you would not normally have a big hatch like that. You'd have one which would be in there again with a small window. 
that's a, a, a post post war Modification. conversion modification that's right an old wartime version on this side you would have the navigator's bench you'd have his table for his charts you'd have his compass his uh, airspeed indicator his altimeter and various other instruments and on the starboard side would have been the wireless operators station he would have had the, the big old-fashioned big square uh, radio sets you also have an HF trailing aerial which you would have to wind out oh, and yeah. trail underneath the aircraft from and longer range just that's just right yep yep that's how you get the range on the HF aerials it is a, a long trailing aerial so that is the old-fashioned style radio these days as you'll see shortly when you look in the cockpit it's rather more modern <laughs> Go up there if you wish and look through and you can oh, see straight wow. away we have twin GPS Navcom systems. We've got a nice DME, we've got ADF and we've got ILS. So all the necessary modern conveniences are here. The column itself is original. So those big red wheels are original. Uh, the magneto switches just to the right of the captain's control wheel are original and all those other switches which are self explanatory by the labelling on them they're all original those everything is designed for a man in here big rudder pedals nice big red undercarriage selector lever and the throttles are the long levers coming out of the roof and next to those are the propeller levers and then here we have the mixture levers and then the trim controls are these handles here so really a pilot's airplane it is really a pilot's airplane that's exactly right fascinating